We already talked about the Dragon of the Apocalypse, but what about the Dragon of the Abyss? Legends long ago told a story about a dark dragon so evil that people revered it as the incarnation of the abyss itself. This dragon once brought the old kingdom to its knees and could only be stopped by the legendary king and its knights. Now 3000 years and this story has been forgotten, but will soon be remembered by all as Phantom Blaster Dragon returns. Phantom Blaster Dragon, the old dragon of the abyss, returns to planet Kray and this time with a vengeance. He once again commands the power of the Shadow Paladin Knights, but this time he can tap into the powers of his mortal enemies. This allows Phantom Blaster Dragon to tap into the true power of the Blasters. Dark Influence is Phantom Blaster Dragon's ability to superior call more cards to the field. This allows him to call Blasted Dark or Blasted Javelin from the soul the moment he enters the Vanguard Circle, or it allows him to call out another copy of himself the turn you're gonna Persona ride another copy. This not only allows him to flood the board, but more importantly, creates sacrifice targets for its main effect. Phantom Blaster Dragon wouldn't be Phantom Blaster Dragon if he wouldn't had damned charging lens. This is his main effect where he is able to sacrifice his own units for his own selfish personal gain. In this iteration of Phantom Blaster Dragon he's able to retire three of his own units for two of his opponents and he gains an additional 10k power and a critical. This is great to not only put pressure on the Vanguard attack itself but also to destroy your opponent's resources and field setup. So against decks that rely on specific fields this ability can be devastating. Now of course Phantom Blessed Dragon is a selfish card, but he isn't alone because he needs his trusted sacrifice targets. And this time we got two specific great ones which fulfill this role. One being the new grid one, Witch of Pandering Brunner. This is effectively a double retire target, making it much easier to pay for the damn charging land skill. You only need this card and just ride Phantom Blessed Dragon because the third target will be generated by just his Dark Influence Superior Soul Call skill. But Brunner isn't the only option, as we also have the new grade one, Black Sage Charon. This is also a pseudo double retire target, only in this case, Charon Superior calls the top card of the deck. Now an interesting aspect about this particular card is that it is also a pseudo deck manipulation tool because we don't have to call the top card of our deck. So if we see a trigger or potentially the over trigger we can just leave it there and just gain the benefit of just drive checking that specific card. To increase the consistency of actually getting to these specific grade ones we got the new grade 2 Darkness Made of Maka. She is an excellent 15k beater for just pressure columns but more importantly it allows us to turn any of our rear guards into a potential new grade one from the top five cards of our deck. And we ideally want to of course hit Charon or Brunner as they are excellent retire targets for Phantom Blaster Dragon's damn charging land skill. Besides Maka we also have another grade 2 which allows us to generate pluses onto the board that can fuel our Phantom Blaster Dragon which is Knight of Heavenly Destruction Kapalt. This is a very interesting card for Phantom Blaster Dragon as it allows us to get either our Persona Ride copies or order cards into our hand and any other type of cards is going to be superior call to the field. And you need to rest the unit but as soon as we can immediately retire those cards we don't really feel the negative downside of resting one of our rear guards as they are just going to be sacked off for phantom blaster dragon immediately after we do this so kapalt is effectively a counter blast plus one skill another interesting card that works really well with phantom blaster dragon is the great one painkiller angel now this is a great card to just cycle for a deck which allows us to get to our pieces that we need either a great one sacrifice targets or our phantom blaster dragon persona ride cards but as an extra bonus this does synergize very nicely with blaster dark because she retires tires herself from the field, thus putting Blaster Dark's plus 5k skill online without needing to sink in a lot of resources if we cannot pay for Phantom Blaster Dragon's damn charging land skill or we don't want to pay the counter blast for Blaster Dark's retire skill. 
For Phantom Blaster Dragon, there's only one ride line that we can play, and that is the Blaster ride line. So we see ourselves going from Full Bow into Blaster Javelin, into Blaster Dark, into Phantom Blaster Dragon. We do this, of course, because we want to get the maximum value of our Dark Influence skill, because we need to Superior Call a Blaster card from our soul to the field. If we don't ride a Blaster Dark in the early game, we cannot get the extra free plus on our first great free turn. But we also do this because Blaster Javelin and Blaster Dark are amazing early game tools to excel our game plan because blaster javelin allows us to get a free plus one the moment that we ride blaster dark a free plus one is always going to be great now it being called in the rest position might be a bit awkward but the moment that we do ride blaster dark we can immediately activate blaster dark's vanguard skill which allows us to sack that unit off to retire one of our opponent's units and to give our blaster dark vanguard unit an additional drive check which means on turn two we're going to swing with twin drive thus making our triggers potential crit triggers even more devastating because we start to pressure opponents very early on so as we can see this blaster right line gives us a very aggressive turn to play where we can superior call the top card of our deck immediately second off the retire one of our opponent's units and then swing with a twin drive vanguard unit and it also then immediately sets up for our phantom blaster dragon right skill to get a free plus one onto the field that then immediately fuels into our damn charging lance ability now as for the trigger lineup you can go either way as every single type of trigger does fulfill purpose because we need to sacrifice our units so we need card advantage so draw triggers can facilitate that but as soon as we can put early pressure onto the board with our Twin Drive Blaster Dark, we might want to put more emphasis on critical triggers because hitting those cheeky early crits can definitely put our opponent in a very deadly and devastating situation because if they're already at 4 damage when we ride our retreat turn and we then keep pressuring with a double crit Vanguard every single turn, can end up ugly very quickly. But front triggers do have some value because our rearguard columns aren't the greatest numbers and the extra 20k shield that we can generate of these new type of front triggers can definitely come in handy to defend against our opponent's strong attacks so that said i personally would go for a typical seven crits for front builds where the fronts are of course a 20k shield variant with the over trigger and the heal trigger filling out the remaining five spots now the interesting about the over trigger in this particular build it does synergize with blaster dark's effect because if we use the blaster dark's ability on the rigor circle we do give the rigor blaster dark an extra drive check but he cannot use it unless we hit the over trigger and then suddenly our rearguard blaster dark will swing with twin drive as a rearguard unit as if it's a great free for this particular spotlight we have one basic variant of planet blaster dragon because there isn't a lot of different direction you can take the deck with the current car pool but there are some specific tech choices or ratios you can decide to tinker with as we have one or two cards that you can think about this is a very basic phantom blaster dragon build because we put in all the generic cards that we see from the new support base so we see the entire blaster right line as well as all the maximum copies of blaster dark phantom blaster dragon himself even blaster javelin but we also see Maka and Charon and Max copies as well as the Great One Brunner and then we tap it off with our text sl slots being Kapalt and Painkiller Angel. Now as you can guess the main strategy of this deck is just to outvalue your opponent with the potential crit pressure from turn two and onwards especially during your Phantom Blaster Dragon turns and then every subsequent turns you want to generate value with your superior call skills or your plus skills and at the same time retiring your opponent's units thanks to Phantom Blaster Dragon and potentially Blaster Dark but I'm gonna be honest right from turn three onwards you much rather want to use your counter blast on phantom blaster dragon instead of blaster dark the only scenario where i would advise using blaster dark skill as a rigged unit is when you use charon skill and you saw an over trigger on the top of your deck then you want to use the skill because then it will translate to an actual extra plus because you get one extra drive check because of it further than that it's relatively straightforward with all your sacrificing abilities and trying to generate the value that you're going to need as I already explained earlier in this video, you can use Painkiller Angel as a cheeky combination with Blaster Dark because if you retire Painkiller Angel, it does put the Blaster Dark online as a rigged unit and it gains the additional 5k power even if you have run out of Counter Blast to use for Phantom Blaster Dragon or Blaster Dark in the first place. Now even though this is the basic template of building a Phantom Blaster Dragon build, we do have some options to tinker with. One of those cards being the Grade 2 Double R's Terrorize Angel. Now you might think to yourself, what's the point of actually running this card? The thing about this card is that it can be a solid 15k beater throughout the entirety of the game. Because this deck does use quite a lot of counter blasts. You use at least one counter blast every single turn. And if we're going to use a Kapalt here or there, that's another counter blast. So it's very likely 
that at the end of the turn, or at least during the battle phase, you've used all your counterblasts, so everything is phased down. So that means the Serialized Angel is going to be a 15k beater, thus at least putting out more pressure every single turn, because Maka is an on-place effect to gain the 5k power, and Bless the Dark, you need to sacrifice something to gain the 5k power. So if you cannot do that, it's just 10k beaters from that point onwards. Now, another option that we can play with this deck is Divine Sister Lapisto. Now, this will add way more counterblast restrictions to your deck, but as soon as the Charon does give us that top deck manipulation, Lapisto could actually be a solid option because it does give you the multi tech potential, and as soon as your opponent will always go into guard the Vanguard attack, that means your Lapisto has free reign to start to keep hitting into your opponent turn after turn after turn. And then once you run out of counterblast that you can use on her, you can just sack her off with Phantom Blaster Dragon and then go for something else. And then the final tech card that you can try to work with is Knight of War Damage Fossad. Fossado is an interesting card that does give us the resource that we're going to need as we're going to use a lot of counterblast. Soul can also be a thing, but overall Soul won't be too much of a problem because every single turn that you write, you generate the soul for Phantom Blaster Dragon. So you only need the remaining soul for either your Painkiller Angels or Maka. Now that said, that means we only have two soul for them to work with. Two soul isn't a lot, so you might run out of soul. So running a Fossado can help you to not only give you the pressure in the mid to late game, but also to give the resource you're going to need if the game progresses a bit longer than you expect it. And once again, a relatively short deck spotlight, because just like Dragonic Overlords, these two new ride lines don't have a lot of cards that actually work directly with the mechanic. They are very reliant on the generic good stuff of their nation, but just like Dragonic Overlord, Kader Sanctuary has a lot of cards specifically dedicated to Bastion and some cards to Hexorb Sorceress, which means there won't be a lot left for Phantom Blessed Dragon himself. And because this archetype really relies on retiring its own stuff, you might think to yourself that this is the cap for Phantom Blessed Dragon. However, we do see more support on the horizon that actually has some retire synergy. So don't think that this is where Phantom Blaster Dragon will stop. I am very hopeful and very optimistic about the fact that we definitely will see more support to upgrade and support this dark dragon of the abyss but that said let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this deck spotlight as well as the deck itself as i know phantom blessed dragon isn't too fan favorite in overdress with a lot of players because it's relatively underwhelming but i it's still fun to have this card back and to have this playstyle accessible for newer players as well so they have a taste for what this card did back in the old days and in the not so old days of V. But with that said, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters over patreon.com slash the insider. You guys are amazing. If you want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can simply go to patreon.com slash the insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I've missed a time leap and I'll see you guys in the next one.